Welcome everybody back to Boost Motion, guys. And today I want to talk about it with you guys. I think, yes, I don't, I'm going to say it. I think we should definitely work on going air to air setups more on our Q50, Q60, and Nissan Z moving forward. So, guys, let's go to jump into the video. Much love. I appreciate my Boost Motion family for always showing their support over the years, but I've been in this community ever since the inception of it. And I've had two Q50s over the year, right? And there's something that I saw a lot more in the last two years. Air to air setups. Now, if you already don't know, the Q50 with the VR30 has an air to water intercooler and uses coolant to charge to cool to cool down the air the air charge, right? But in the last two years, a lot more tuners have been tuning air to air setups, and they're seeing, from what I can tell, that it works similarly. But the air to air sys the air to air setups are performing better. Now, there's not enough people out there with air to air to sit there and say, hey. Are they better? They're just tuning it for the performance of the car, right? I get it, right? If you're a tuner or if you're owner of a shop, you're going to try to push certain uh, certain uh, parts and products on people. That's fine because you know it's true and true. But there's not enough people out there that are actually doing it. I'm only going off numbers on paper. But we actually need to see if those numbers on paper actually apply to the drag strip. So we need more Q50s out there with air-to-air -air setups, which we even have a couple people who be in the streets uh, with air-to-air setups set up on their stock turbo and upgraded turbo, right? And at the end of the day, those companies don't get as much recognition. Now, there are, from what I remember, two companies that still sell air-to-air -air setups out there. I'm not going to name the ones who are as of right now. You guys are going to write below why, right? But I think there need to be other companies who actually take the time out to try to develop a system so that it's less more of a Frankenstein type of thing. I'm saying that one of the companies actually do their, their due diligence and give you a quality product. But I think if bigger companies like AMS or Zima Motorsports actually made some kind of system, a, a, a product that is more OEM fitment and everything is pretty much, if you know what I mean, I's are dotted and T's are crossed. For instance, like the air, um, the air to water setups. Of course, you would have to remove the air to water intercoolers. So you remove all that whole, uh, remove that coolant system. Now that coolant system still has a uh, a coolant water temperature uh, sensor. You want to keep that sensor because you would actually have to put a bug in or weld in a bug so that you can screw that in on the air to air setup because it will still pick up the air temps. Right? You either put that pro or pre. Well, you would want to put that post um air uh, air charge or after the intercooler because you want to know how cool the air is before it goes into the motor right now you also have to think about the end the uh, the cooling pumps that are used for the heat exchanger system when you unplug that that actually affects the system too i don't know if you can tune that stuff out but you would want to actually plumb that in i would assume with uh maybe the oem setup you might just want to keep it so in a loop where you just have it just pumping the coolant within a circle and you want to keep that stuff connected. Like the pump will still be running. It'll still be part of the system, but it's just pumping the same water in a circle. Let's just say in that corner, that is it. Or maybe you can put it on part of the OEM system where it can be used as a bypass. It, or whatever you choose to do or whatever you want to do. I don't know. I'm saying it. You, you might even want to be able to hook it up to, we'll leave it at that. You don't know, right? Um, then after that, there's not much other really sensors or things that are that that directly deal with that air water intercooler system it's mainly that then you also still have like the map sensor and these other things uh those are mainly yeah those are not on that those are actually on the intake manifold so i'll correct me in the comments i can't remember i haven't had a vr 30 in a while it's been a minute i've been looking at freaking v8s for quite a while right now two um m177 motors so i'm confused between the two i can't I really can't remember but if, there, if you need to tap it in, you could probably tap it in somewhere there if you need to on the charge pipe and go towards, towards the throttle bodies. Now, from what we've seen on dynos repeatedly, that if you take a stock turbo Q50, Q60 Nissan Z, the air-to-air -air system usually yields 20 to 30 more wheel horsepower. That is a big gain. But here's the thing. The price for these air-to-air -air systems are kind of expensive. I'm seeing between, was it, twenty five to $4,000. That is an expensive setup knowing that you can just – Go with a heat exchanger upgrade that can be done in what two hours of work, and that's it. That's four hundred dollars compared to how much? Four thousand, or thirty eight hundred, or three thousand. It's still a big difference between the two. I understand that you want to go with a proper core because there's different um, uh, there's different type of uh front mount intercoolers. You have two different brands. You have uh, Bar. Damn it. 
I think it's Barr and Finn or Finn and Barr. Bear with me, guys. I I, I, I hate to hear it. Uh, the different type of intercoolers. I know one is um Barr and Plate or Steel and Plate. Let me see. Intercoolers. I'm doing right on video. Intercooler design, right? Bear with me. I'm not going to put it on the screen right now. Intercooler designs. You have Barr and Finn. Tube and fin, sorry. Tube and fin and bar and plate. Wow. See, I know I messed it up. Bar and plate is usually thicker. That's and it the way its recovery isn't as quick. Tube and fin is a little bit quicker, but it, it gains heat a lot faster. You know what I'm saying? So they're the way that they handle airflow is a little bit differently. It takes bar and plate to heat up a lot fast a lot slower, but it takes a lot more to cool. And still and tube and fin will um cool uh heat up the fastest but also dissipates the heat the quickest if you know what i mean but this is all depending on the type of driving you you, you do over years right and if they just get the proper cores and i get it there's some piping that you have to put into a well then i get it but i think it's something that could be done and i mean if it could be done for like two g's i think this might be a better benefit for the people out there because rather than trying their best to throw um, a heat exchanger right for 500 then they're saying it's still not enough. Then they go get a fender tank. That's another four or $500. You're almost $1,000 into it, or $800, $900. Then you're like, okay, cool. Let me get the um, the reservoirs, and then let me go swap the air to water intercools. That's like another, what, $1,300? I can't even remember, $1,300. At that time, you added so much more coolant to the capacity. I mean, so much coolant to the system. Then you add the upgraded um, uh, pump and everything. You're about $4,000 in. For all this extra cooling, all this extra weight, and you still don't yield more performance than compared to a, a guy who just went air to air on the same setup. So what I'm saying is if you're 91, 93, or E85 stock turbo, you could throw all those modifications, all those nice modifications at it. But then this guy just ripped that stuff out and just went air to air, and he'll, perform, he'll have better performance in the sense of horsepower. We want to see how that translates to the actual street, but technically it should translate to the street. Technically, but we need more people out there in the streets and or on the track to actually see it. Theoretically, it should apply. All right. So outside of that, guys, if you have a good morning, good afternoon, night. This is just more of a rant video. I think this is something that I would like to see more in the community because other cars out there, other manufacturers that have turbo setups, most of them go air to air. Yes, most of the fastest drag strip cars are air to water because it's short bursts or they use ice tanks because it's short bursts. So it's like they don't they, they want it takes a lot longer for that coolant i would say to warm up in a a six to ten second race compared to a car that is air to air because the car has to be moving and that air has to be cooling going between those fins to cool it off so it has to be in motion so i get it but theoretically for the average day person i mean none of this supply just add a heat exchanger call a day but if you want to add a little bit more performance i think this is a best bank for its buck or good investment because most other man up one backs from jetta guys to audi guys to any other boosted cars that you know from evos and stis they're air to air man they're the air they could go air to water but everyday business it's air to air all right so outside of guys you have a good morning good afternoon night i really appreciate you guys support you guys have a good day thank you